Welcome everybody to episode number 55 of Gaming Culture Radio. Uh, I'm your host Tyler, joined as always by our co-host for continuing coverage of everything E3 2017. Let's start with Mike. Mike, how you doing today? Oh, not bad, man. Got a lot of stuff to talk about today, that's we for do. sure. We do. More than I think um, we thought we were going to. What was that? What was that? I'm more, sorry to hear. more than I think we thought we were going to have to talk about, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, also joining us, uh, staff writer for XboxCulture.net, Graham. How you doing, sir? Doing good. Uh, this weekend's been rolling along. A lot of great things going on, and uh, we just plugging away and moving through all these conferences. There've been some great things, and we're going to talk about them, obviously, because that's what we're here for. <clears throat> yeah. So, personally, like to thank everybody who's been joining in and listening to us. Great to have you guys part of the community and helping us grow. And uh, hopefully, you guys stick around and uh, help us to get better. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we would definitely want to say thank you for that. And uh, finally, joining us, staff writer for ExpressCulture.net, is Eugene. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm a little bit tired because uh, I couldn't go to sleep last night because I had a certain Duran Duran song stuck in my head, <laughs> which is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, uh, we will You're absolutely awesome we will absolutely get to that trailer. Um, for everything gaming related, you uh, we have a couple destinations for you to head to. First of all, go on Facebook and join the Gaming Culture Radio forums. While you're there, submit questions to be read on the show, and you'll be entered to win one of our E3 giveaways. We also do giveaways monthly, so uh, even after E3 is over, keep sending those questions in. We'll be entered for monthly giveaways, and now that we've just reached 100 members on there, we'll be moving up to the next tier of giveaways monthly, so it'll be a little more than uh, a little more than what we've given away in the past. So uh, we want to thank yeah. you guys uh, for helping us reach 100 people there uh, in a fairly short period of time. So we do appreciate that. You guys are awesome. I uh, also want to mm-hmm. celebrate uh, this month so far, and we're not going to get into exact numbers until probably the end of the month, but you guys uh, as a community have helped us tremendously here. It is only, what, the 12th of June, and we mm-hmm. are already more than double our previous monthly high for downloads. Fantastic. So you guys are awesome. We love you. Nice. Uh, we, we really appreciate the support, and uh, you know, thank you do. for being part of the community. And, and then finally... Head on over to X, uh, XboxCulture.net and PlayStationCulture.net. We're partners of theirs. And, uh, you know, most of us, uh, actually all of us contribute to that site in one way or another. And we, uh, you know, you can go there to find all your gaming news for Xbox, PlayStation, and soon Nintendo. So please head on over there. And finally, every single week you're going to be able to watch us on Twitch on the Respawn Network channel. Respawn Network is the overarching... Uh, umbrella company for Xbox Culture.net, PlayStation Culture.net, and Nintendo Culture.net. Now that we're done yeah. with all that, let's get into how we're going to do this today. So we're going to kind of go round table. Rather than just going down the list of everything, we're going to go with Bethesda first. They went last night. And each of us Bethesda. is going to yeah, each of us is going to talk about one thing. <laughs> uh, one thing that really stood out that we want to talk about. So uh, who wants to go first? I'll say something about the, the, right. the, the, the that conference. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's just it's just never gonna happen. I'm just, I'm just gonna give up on life for that. Um, I really like the Wolfenstein stuff. Okay, so Wolfenstein, I, let's talk about it. Yes. Um, I you know like I said a long time ago, I was playing the original one with friends, you know, um, via local network, and uh, I just it's funny how how far along it's come, you know. Um, I just like that alternate reality thing. I like the the tongue and cheekness they have in here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not all you know, serious business. You know, death and destruction and stuff. Um, I think they got a good balance, and I'm really looking forward to this game. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you played the first one, right? I, I did, and yeah, it's it's just a fun shooter. It's not. Yeah. It is. It's a little more on the goofy side, but mm-hmm. it is. It's not easy. No. But. It's not. Uh, I mean, there are some difficult enemies that you have to defeat in the game, and there's some yeah. really cool uh, sequences that you know Bethesda tends to bring to games. But yeah, yeah I was really impressed with this trailer. They hinted at it last year mm-hmm. with that little code screen reveal thing. They sort mm-hmm. of hinted that this game was coming, and they showed it uh, showed it last night, and it's mm-hmm. coming out this year, late October. So that's that's pretty cool. What do you guys think about yeah. it? Oh, I'm totally excited for Thank like you. all the gameplay and. Like you guys said, uh, um, you know, they didn't take it too seriously. They had a lot of fun with it, which uh, Bethesda, which uh, whenever it comes around to me, I, I do want to talk about how creative and fun they were uh, the mm-hmm. entire broadcast. So, um, mm-hmm. no, I'm, I'm totally excited for the game. Cool. Yeah. And what other, one other thing I wanted to throw in there, too, that I thought was cool is that uh, Skyrim's coming out for the Switch. So, 
you know, I'm sure there's people out there who are, you know, hardcore Nintendo fans and have only owned a Nintendo console which haven't had a chance to play Skyrim. So now they will. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty cool. So, all right, Graham, any yep. thoughts on Wolfenstein? Yes, I was going to say, if I said that I wasn't interested and didn't appeal to me, I'd be lying because I actually pre-ordered this game. I haven't nice. pre-ordered many, but nice. this nice. is one that made the list. And <clears throat> cool. I might even try a uh, new, new order, I think that's what it's called, just to maybe yeah. yeah. kind of get some kind of story background. Yeah. But if not, I, like I said, I got this one pre-ordered, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. The music was awesome. The trailer was amazing. And... I, the story, like I didn't know anything about it, but it seems to be a really appealing story. It's, it, it just like so many hints of Fallout, but like totally different. But, mm-hmm. like, uh, yeah, no, I'm totally excited for it. When I watched this, I'm like, didn't quite know what it was, but I was totally intrigued, and now I'm, I'm all on board. Can't mm-hmm. wait to play it. Cool. Right. All right. Who would like to go next? Oh, I'll go ahead. All right. So, um. Yeah, I'll, I want to praise Bethesda on their overall conference. They uh, they took a unique approach to it. Um, you know, they they came out uh, first and they introduced themselves, and then they started playing a video. And I'm like, man, this this is a little bit cheesy. And then they started going into it a little bit more, and uh, you know, it kind of looks like a 1970s uh, kind of infomercial cartoon yeah. type deal where they're going yeah. through Bethesda land. And I'm actually uh, uh, in the background here. I'm watching the. Uh, IGN's footage, uh, they've actually uh, recreated like a mini Bethesda land at E3 in Los Angeles. And uh, they have like carnival rides and they have they're serving drinks that are uh, Fallout themed and Doom themed. Nuka Cola snacks. Uh, yeah, they nice. got Nuka Cola. Uh, and then they're also like they have a food bar where they have like a, a Doom. Uh, there's like some kind of Doom spare ribs and things like that. I'm like, man, oh, I damn. totally wish I was there. Plus, yeah. they got. They got oh, the yeah. VR stations uh, set up. You know, they did say that they had a, a VR set up so you could play, uh, which I want to talk about next, uh, Doom VR? Mm-hmm. Or v- uh, VFR, VFR. Rather, uh, following yeah. the, you know, uh, BFG. Um, mm-hmm. Doom VFR and then also Fallout uh, 4 VR, uh, which was really impressive. Um, it kind of looked, uh, you know, odd at first, especially with Doom. You would see your hands, your floating hands there, so... I really yeah. can't get that experience unless you try it out yourself. So I wish I was yeah. there to actually try it out. I wish I had a vibe, you know, so I could actually play it. So hopefully uh, maybe Best Buy will do something where they'll set up a stand so they can try that stuff out uh, mm-hmm. eventually. Yeah. Graham, your thoughts um, on, on the VR? I, on the VR, kind of like what Eugene said about uh, you kind of really need to experience it. Yeah. So, like, they had to portray it with the hands, and you got a picture, like, that's actually your hands holding that stuff, which it's it's hard to cross it over. It is. But, yeah, like, it'd be great for if there's Best Buy nearby me or yeah. somewhere where I could go try it out. But the scary thing is, if I go try it out, that means I'm probably going to have to buy it. And then <laughs> to buy it, I'm going I'm to need the HTC Vive. Right. And with Xbox One X coming out, this could be an expensive few months for me so it is. we'll see um okay. but even if i don't buy it like i just want to try it and then i'll know what i'm going to get into and mm-hmm. if i want it because basically there really hasn't been anything to push me to jump on that vr train so i right. think this could be it and if i'm going to get fallout 4 vr then i'm probably just going to try doom vr too right because mm-hmm. mostly right. vr things you've seen is just like little short like I don't know, two hour little just experiences, right? Just give you a taste of VR. But these look like full blown games right from beginning to end. So these could be the two that I uh, choose when I do get the Vive. Okay. Yeah. Hey, right Grammy, you you consider getting any yes, more uh, renters insurance going, dude? <laughs> All this stuff that you buy. <laughs> yeah, I might have to up it, eh? Yeah. Seriously. All right. As far as the VR goes, it's definitely uh, one of those try before you buy sort of things. Um, like like the other guy said, I mean, it, it would be a really good idea for these retailers to have um, a demo available, you know, because just from watching it yesterday, all you all you saw was all you saw were hands, you know, moving around, and then basically the rest of it looked like the regular game you'd play on a regular Xbox, PS4, and PC. Mm-hmm. So didn't really tell the tale. So uh, you know, and and <coughs> once again, try before you buy. I think this is definitely one of those things where I where I'd have to see it firsthand, you know, and be wowed. 
Because I'd hate to buy it just, just blindly and just be like, if this was it. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so. yeah, absolutely. I, and I totally agree. It looks cool. It's hard to tell. Um, the thing is, it's going to be the same experience whether you buy it right now or buy it a year from now. Yeah. So, you know, if you're patient enough to wait for the price to come down on both the hardware and the game, because the games are full price, or at least v, uh, Fallout is on Steam. So, if you're patient enough to wait, you're going to get the same experience out of it. So, um, that, that, I don't know. I, it, it didn't grab me enough to say I need to go buy a VR headset. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So. Like I said, from, from the very beginning with all this VR stuff, until it gets a lot more support, you know, and the prices come down a little bit, I'm still going to wait. Yeah. I'll just go over to Granny's house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Graham, what did you drive over to Canada. What did you, yeah, want, what did you want to talk about for Bethesda? Okay. I'm going to talk about, first of all, I'm going to talk about their overall yeah, conference. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like their whole approach about Bethesda land. And going yeah. through each one of their titles and series and stuff like that, yeah. which is really cool. And the fact that it's not really based on, but they kind of set up like a, a, Beth a Bethesda land there so people can <laughs> go around and yeah. explore it. So, um, but what I'm going to talk about is a Skyrim Switch Edition. Yep. Uh, the biggest, well, I guess the most standout thing was the cool idea about uh, inserting an amiibo, your character, or whatever, into it. Like, they just showed Link with the Master Sword and this tunic, but I'm sure they're going to, like, cross over so many other different characters. Yeah. And it's really not that surprising because Bethesda is opening to mods for their games, so this is kind of like a mod, except instead of you having to go pick it and download it, you just put Amiibo yeah. onto your Switch Joy-Con, mm -hmm. and then it just pops in there. Yeah. But the fact that this is, like, a nice portable game, like, if you go away, visit family for the weekend or something like that, mm -hmm. This would be a cool game just to take and just like yep. play a, maybe a little side mission or stuff like that. The big mm -hmm. question I would like to know is about like DLC because the DLC has been made for it. It's not going to come with it. So yeah. I would be really surprised if they don't offer it for maybe like a package deal or maybe a season pass. I don't know if that's the way they would go. But uh, it's too bad that the graphics won't be upgraded. But with a like, screen that small, then... With what it's going to be outputting, I think it's going to be fine. And the little controls where you can hold the Joy Cons and like do it so you're actually pulling a bowl back, I think that's really cool. Like the novelty mm -hmm. again might wear yes. off really fast, mm -hmm. but it's a really neat idea how they portray that it, that can be done. So yeah. it's good to see that. And uh, we did get a release date, right? Um, and I'm just looking at my notes, and I have no release date. Yeah, uh, I think we it's did. well. We, yeah. So another thing, too, I'll talk about uh, the old Bethesda experience was all the games they showed released this year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're so confident. They're like, we don't need to show anything two years down the road or a year down the road. We're going to let the people know what they can experience within the next six months, which is awesome. Right. So like, mm -hmm. like I said, like all these things are fresh in our mind that when they come out, we're like, oh, I remember that because I just seen it recently. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a really good approach and good on them. And didn't get the mobile game like I kind of predicted, but that's fine. There's a, there's always in the future, right? Oh yeah. I, uh, what do you guys think about uh, the Switch? I hope, I hope a lot more uh, uh, people follow suit with that. A lot more developers and publishers that when you show a game, release it in the next few months. That way, like you said, it is fresh in our mind. Uh, plus, you're not overwhelming us and, you know, giving our hopes up by showing a game and then, oh, it's possibly yeah. coming out Delay. next year and then it gets yeah. delayed and yeah. then, oh, for sure it's going to come out, uh, you know, spring of 2018 and then it gets delayed again. You know, the fact that they came prepared, um, that messaging was very clear at the very end yep. when he said, we're not, we are not going to show any games that are not coming out this year and that you cannot play right now. So, um, I, I really like that, and definitely about the Switch, I know a lot of people are, are hyped for Skyrim, because like uh, Mike brought up, you know, maybe you've only had a Wii or a Wii U, you've never had an Xbox or PlayStation, you've never played Skyrim, so it gives a great opportunity for them, and never before you've been, been able to uh, just carry Skyrim in your pocket, and mm -hmm. just yeah. uh, whip it out anytime and just play Skyrim wherever you go. Yeah. All right. Settle down, Mike. <clears throat> Settle down. So, I don't know if you want to put a Switch in your pocket, but... Yeah. So Got one hand in my pocket and so the other one. For me, um, I'm glad you guys left this for me. I appreciate it. Um, 
is the Evil Within. I, I, I know, I knew. Yeah. <laughs> the Evil Within 2, yeah, man. First of all, one of the best video game trailers I've ever seen. And oh, yeah. I just thought, I second that notion. And it's everything about it, just the feel, the, the visuals, the, the music especially, was mm-hmm. right on with that. And yeah. this, this is a game I'm buying day one. The first game was fantastic. It is, uh, you know, it's, it's horrors only Bethesda, I think, can do it. And, man, I was, just, I was blown away by that trailer. Uh, there was another fantastic one today for Ubisoft that we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, mm-hmm. but still, man, that, that Evil Within 2 stands above in, in terms of pretty much any trailer shown this year at E3 for me. So what do you guys think? Are you guys on board getting this? Eugene, I know you're not a big horror guy, but... Oh, uh, you know, I, I just want to buy it just to support them because they did mm-hmm. such a fantastic job. Uh, with this trailer it is uh uh by far the best uh trailer i've seen at e3 I- i've watched it twice again today mm-hmm. uh showed it to some people at work while i was at work and they're like oh my god this is not a game that you want to play in the dark is it i'm like no, no totally not yeah. uh and then they've released just more gameplay footage too i mean mm-hmm. you thought the trailer looked incredible uh just watch this extra uh gameplay footage that they have uh it, it looks fantastic and again this game's coming out october 13th friday the 13th in October this year. So, again, every game they talked about is coming out this year. So, uh, Graham, your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts was, yeah, I totally back you up on probably one of the greatest trailers I've ever seen. Music was amazing. I was so sucked in the whole time. Nothing could distract me. Not even butterflies, which usually distract me. That's how concentrated <laughs> I was. But, it, no, it was amazing i like i said i didn't finish the first one kind of feel guilty about that mm-hmm. but uh if if i do decide to get this one i probably will jump in on it but this game looks amazing and i'm sure people who like this game and people have been waiting for a long time they will not be disappointed and i i would clearly i would watch somebody go through this one this this oh, is yeah. probably a great game to actually watch on twitch mm-hmm. if uh because you're probably going to pick it up, Tyler. So if oh, you stream this, I'm yeah. sure I'd watch it. And I'm yeah, sure I'll many other people would watch it. I'll and watch then I might have to need lights on. Don't judge me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's definitely a good game. Great atmosphere. This game in VR would probably give people heart attacks. So it's probably best that it doesn't go in yeah. VR. But, yeah, great game. I... And uh, were, you, were you guys expecting this game? Or did this game catch uh, you guys off guard? I was kind of. A little. I was hoping for it. I wasn't expecting it. Um, but, yeah, I was hoping the trailer wouldn't end. Honestly, it was so so well done. But, uh, Mike, what do, you, what do you think about it? Oh, I thought it was very interesting. I don't know the whole story about everything because I haven't played, mm-hmm. but, you know, five, ten minutes in the first one, like I said. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to give the first one a go and then take it from there. I mean, it looks like an amazing game in the, you know, the, the presentation that they showed was really, really, really good. Yeah. All right. So, uh, wrap up thoughts on Bethesda. Well, um, let's let's give it a grade. How'd they do? Um, well, Somebody I, besides me? Yeah. I thought, I thought, I thought I we need to think on this. last night. Well, that was on the post show. This is the podcast. So, oh, okay. give it a grade. All right. All right. Well, I gave them uh, A minus B plus. Yep. You know, I thought they were on point. I thought their game was solid. You know, that that was pretty cool with the, with the, um, um, the, theme park and i really liked the intro uh video to uh wolfenstein you know mm-hmm. um yeah a yeah. minus b plus right? i i gave him an a minus i think that it's uh i think like i said last night on the post show i think e- your ea could learn a lot from watching that conference that if, if ea had condensed theirs down to 45 minutes we probably would be saying a lot nicer things about uh-huh. them but but yeah, Bethesda made the most of their time. They were every second of that uh, presentation and conference was impactful, and yeah. had purpose. So yes. it was it was very well done beginning to end. Um, Graham. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure last night I gave them a B plus, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna stick to that. Uh, yeah. Overall, I think they did pretty much everything right. There wasn't a lot of wrong. Maybe there could have been a little more content and made it a little more lengthier, but overall, very very good uh, conference and definitely look forward to see what they're going to have for us next year Mm -hmm. because they've been talking about these ips and stuff like that right so we know there's some great stuff in the making so i'm glad they didn't show it to us because i guess they're probably not far enough in that they don't want to show us that stuff so yeah b plus is great and Mm -hmm. can't wait to see them again next year cool 
Eugene? Uh, I think I said B plus last night, and it is very borderline uh, A minus B plus, but uh, it's very short and sweet. I wish it wouldn't have ended so quickly, um, just because they did such a great job. Uh, I feel it started out real slow, but uh, once it started picking up, uh, man, I, I, I was thoroughly impressed. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I could tell the audience was engaged for when they did show the audience. Uh, everyone was impressed with it. I think they really cater to their fans by really focusing uh, on their uh, big AAA titles uh, that they're famous for. Uh, mm-hmm. Didn't bring us any new IPs, um, which you know I'm not too surprised about. But I mean, they focused yeah. on their on their big titles, and I'm excited for Wolfenstein. Uh, I don't want to downplay either. The Wolfenstein trailer was also a fantastic trailer. Um, it kind of caught us off guard at first. We're like, what is this? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. I, I think we're all surprised. And like, once again, Evil Within, uh, I think, was the highlight. Uh, so far, highlight of uh, E3 for me. It's the, uh, mm-hmm. Even though I probably won't play it, I'll probably watch somebody else play it, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is is the highlight of E3. And uh, definitely thumbs up to Bethesda on that. Yep. All right. Well, let's transition into Ubisoft. So Ubisoft went just a couple hours ago. We're going to take the same format, except yep. going reverse order. So, uh, I'll go ahead and go first, and I want to talk Skull and Bones. All right. Oh, ho, ho. The <laughs> elephant in the room. Yep. So, of course you would. Man. <clears throat> um, it, it was like, it was almost, at the very beginning, it was almost like watching like a Pirates of the Caribbean trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With some of the music and the, the bodies floating to the bottom and all this stuff. Um, yep. And then seeing the gameplay and, you know... Uh, Taking the, uh, and then seeing the, um, or I'm sorry, seeing the trailer and then seeing the gameplay portion afterward, where they showed, you know, how you go through and play it online against other people, was mm-hmm. just awesome. Like it's it's a type of pirate game that I think a lot of us have been looking for for a long time. It's like yeah. a serious Sea of Thieves. Yeah. <laughs> and it is, uh, man, I just everything about this game is awesome. I, I thought it was fantastic beginning to end. I thought. Uh, again, a great trailer, but mm-hmm. um, what do you guys think? I think that the, the the one with the rammer on the end of it was perfect for Grammy because yeah. you know how much Grammy likes to Grambo. <laughs> Grambo, yeah. Get him, Grammy. <laughs> <charge. laughs> you know, <laughs> don't call me Grambo for nothing. <laughs> I like that. Like how they have the class system with boats. Um, yes. I watched. I watched the. Unfortunately, I missed the first go around of it, but I sat down and watched the the multiplayer trailer. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, this is going to be serious business, you know cutthroat i i did not get i did i did not see in a gameplay trailer anything pretty much besides fighting the sh- you know each other with the ships and stuff yeah it's, i'm very curious about how you get the loot if there are things like uh, sea of thieves where you know you got to go out of your ship and you know haul it in and you know what's underneath the water you know what's in the on land i want to know all that mm-hmm. stuff but it, but, it was a, it was a pre-alpha build so, yeah. you know, this game's still probably 15 months away, but yeah. or 16, but yeah, I mean, for what it was, it was good. Yeah, but uh, Sea, of Th- sea of Thieves is going to be directed at a completely different audience than the it people is. that are going to play this one. It is. So, uh, I'm going to play them both, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was really excited about this one, because I like my, my pirate games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Graham. What are your thoughts this on game it? looks awesome. Yeah, no, this game looks amazing. Uh, even, I'm guessing it's gonna be on the Xbox One X and 4K. So yeah, this game is gonna look stunning, stunning on the open waters. Like even, I'm not sure what engine it was running on or what system, but it looked amazing as it was. And yeah, like you guys have experience playing uh, Sea of Thieves, so mm-hmm. it, you're saying it was kind of like that, but more realistic. Which mm-hmm. I kind of like. The, like the whole cartoony thing is kind of nice, but if you're looking for, I guess, more like kind of immersion or something like that than the real life. But yeah, this game had so many fine points to it, and nobody knew this was coming. And like we've talked about Black Flag, about being on the open water and being pirates and attacking other ships. Yeah. So it looks like they took a lot of like cue from this and hints, and I guess they probably heard that people really enjoyed Black Flag for that reason. So they incorporated it, which is nice to see. And the whole online multiplayer and five on five, this yeah. thing looks like a ton of fun. And I can't wait to try this out. I actually, uh, I went to go sign on for, for the beta, but uh, yes. they said the site's not up and running yet. So. Okay. 
I'm well, sure, and, sure they did going to be jumping on that. Yeah, and you know every single yep, game go ahead. gets every single game gets a set of analytics, and they study data left and right. They know where people spend their time in these games down to the second. And mm-hmm. I'm sure Assassin's Creed Four, they looked at and were like, everybody's playing as a pirate on the, on the open sea. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that oh, probably yeah. sometimes the you're idea. like, I'm just going to jump in this boat and. Just go yeah. out and start some battles or something, yeah. And, and that's probably what sparked the idea for this game. So, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it looks awesome. Though, Eugene, what so do you it think? is a ways away. Yeah, oh yeah, fall 18. Yeah, they said fall 2018, yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I'm glad you brought up Pirates of the Caribbean, because I was confused for a sec, because whenever I saw it come up, and you know, they start singing their pirate songs, I'm mm-hmm. like, man, is this is this the Pirates of the Caribbean MMO, you know, mm-hmm. from back in the day? Because yeah. they, they were going to make that game back in the day, and I'm like, man, I thought Disney... Disney was done with this. Um, so I, I was very impressed by it as a beautiful game, gorgeous game when you're yep. selling up on the open waters. Uh, but it's very reminiscent of uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I mean, even the battles going down the the, uh, the cannon play and everything, uh, everything mm-hmm. looks uh, Black Flag. So I, I'm glad they're catering to the audience because they do know that I, I think it is an audience favorite of the Assassin's Creed series that mm-hmm. uh, it's everyone loves the Black Flag and mm-hmm. it, it's it's highly praised as the best Assassin's Creed. I'm very excited for it. Uh, I'm kind of interested, like one of you guys said about you know what else is there because we saw the ship we saw the ship battles, um, but you know what else? Uh, which I know in Assassin's Creed you, know, you would take down a ship and you could leave the ship and sometimes dive down. Uh, and do mm-hmm. different things underwater to grab yep. treasures and things. Uh, yep, you, so I you hope, can do I, that in this one as well, yep. Yeah, so I hope there's a little bit more, um, you know, but it, it made me think, like, oh, man, Sea of Thieves, uh, what are they? What are those uh, developers thinking right now? Um, because, uh, yeah. like I said, it, it was a little bit of an elephant in the room, like, hold on, we've already seen a game like this, uh, except it looks, you know, just stunning, which, like you guys said, it is two different audiences, yeah, um, you know, uh, Sea of Thieves more, more, more focuses on you know four four player co op, jump in, uh, find treasures together, things like that. This is more about uh, my ship is better than yours. I'm going to take yeah. you down. Who, was, who's better yeah. on the Who's better on the open seas uh, with uh, their ship? So I really like the customization and everything, and I, I'm excited mm, for this yeah. game. I was going to say I think yes, for I think sure. Sea of Thieves is more of a play with your I want to play with my friends type of game. A, whereas mm-hmm. this appears to be more of a competitive type of game. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So yeah, and, yeah. and like you were talking about, Yeah, and like you were talking about like Black Flag. When I was watching this, I'm like, I think I want to go play Assassin's Creed Black Flag now. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I just want to go in, just go on the open waters and just see what's going to happen, right? Because got a little taste of it and got a long ways for this one. But this is a fair bit after Sea of Thieves, right? So it's probably not that big of an issue. Like, you almost mm-hmm. got, like, ten months between them or something like that, or whatever. Yeah, we're getting Sea of so Thieves probably I don't think... in February. I would think. Yeah, so, like, basically, Sea of Thieves will probably just get us primed up for this. We'll be like, okay, now I'm ready to play some ser- more serious, and then when this comes out, it's like, okay, we can, let's go do it. Yeah, right. yeah, that's, for sure. That's my... Alright, yeah. who's, up? who's up next? Who went second to last last time? Eugene, right? Or Graham? Graham. Me? Sure. Okay. Which one am I going to pick? Let's go with... I'm going to go with Assassin's Creed. Let's let's stick to the whole Assassin's Creed. Okay. Uh, this was another game that I actually pre-ordered. Now, this game, watching the Ubisoft conference, didn't do anything to make me, oh, I want to get this. Is when we watched it from the Microsoft conference. Mm-hmm. For, first of all, the graphics look so much better. I don't know. I'm guessing it wasn't in true 4K how they were showing it, but through Microsoft they're showing in true 4K. Right away, I noticed the visual difference. But mm-hmm. like I, I watched a little more gameplay after because uh, half an hour they had they had a half an hour of uh, game footage, so I watched a little bit of it. Mm-hmm. Looks incredibly smooth how you pull out the bow and now if you like attack enemies like you get weapons off them and stuff like that. So this yeah. game looked amazing, like you ride on horses, and that was just like a little taste of what it could be, but right. I think this is going to be an amazing game, and like I said, I've got this one pre-ordered, so that's that would be two uh, Ubisoft games I got pre-ordered, which is surprising, and I didn't expect all this, but uh, cool. it looks great. We'll what do you guys if, think? We'll see if you get them this year. Um, but uh, <laughs> they, they normally don't delay Assassin's Creed, though, so you'll probably get it, just with patches. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, this game looks fantastic. The only thing that, that concerned me was I watched today, this afternoon, a boss battle where, you know, the boss is just a damage sponge. You know, and it's like, you're just going to hit him over and over and over and over and over and over and over. You're going to dodge attack, dodge attack, dodge attack until he falls down. And I hope that that's not the majority of boss battles in the game. Because they have said they want to go towards more boss battles in Assassin's Creed Origins than they had than they've had in the past. So I just I hope there's some differentiation there. I mean it might just be a bad boss battle they picked, like the that terrible scale bond one we saw last year. Scalebond, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. like that. So yeah, it might have just um, been that. It, it's yeah, not I, enough to scare me I, away from it because everything else about the game looks great. But but yeah, yeah, I didn't watch the gameplay that far into it, so mm-hmm. I didn't know about that, but. You know, with good comes the bad sometimes. So, yeah. well, let me ask you this, Tyler. Yeah. What What do you want in a boss battle? I just like this. I like uh, I like when I see different types of bosses that require different types of types. Excuse me, of tactics. So right. you know, there's there are some games where it's like every single boss battle turns into, you know, dodge, roll away, and attack. Dodge, roll away, and attack. You know, like, um, yeah, like Dark and, Souls. <laughs> yeah, that's just yeah. I just don't. <laughs> I just don't want that over and over and over. I want to have to take different tactics, and I, and I think Assassin's Creed is a ter- perfect type of game to do that with yes. the different type of approaches you take towards assassinations yeah. in the game. So, Use the environment and yeah. stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. So I'm just hoping we see that. But uh, like I said, it wasn't enough to scare me off of the game. Yeah. So. Well, I just uh, I just don't see how much further they can go besides you know the rock paper scissors and uh, and using environmental uh, stuff to take down the boss because it is a one-on-one thing. So, you know, and you're uh, most of the time you're much smaller than the boss is. The yeah. reason why it's, you know, why it's the boss. So, you know, you got you got to you got to pick your timing and and get in there and take your shots when you can and wait it wait it out. I mean, and it's like just like it is in Dark Souls, you know. It's people unless you bring another friend in, it's, it's you against the world. So, mm-hmm. I don't know I don't know yeah. what else they could possibly throw in there, you know. It's just kind of hard. It's just kind of hard to get real creative with something like that. Well, you know, I there, mean, there's ways to make uh, have use the environment against them, you know. And if and if some if some are designed that way, um, like I said, if you can, and why not? If you can sneak in and get and take the longer route, maybe the longer, more dangerous route, and get into perfect position, why can't mm-hmm. you one strike kill them and perform an assassination mm-hmm. on them? Something like that um, versus. Just running up to him, having the the showdown at the OK Corral, and then you know going through that dance for ten minutes. You know what I mean? So uh, there, there's the, different ways to do it. Most of the bosses aren't just human, like your your guy is. That's you right. know, fighting them. So one hit killing them is usually pretty far fetched. Yeah, I know. In my opinion. Right, right. But so, yeah. So Eugene, your thoughts? Uh, so. I want to talk about that. First of all, thank you, Graham, for uh, leaving the game that I think uh, wowed everyone and impressed everyone whenever it was brought on on stage. Just Dance 2018 was announced. <laughs> and I think everyone, the crowd started cheering. Everyone, no, no, that's not the I game didn't want I to take that off from you, Eugene. I really didn't want no, to. No, I, I do want to talk about I, I gained a new fan today, uh, or somebody gained a new fan, uh, BB Rexa. Was that who came out on stage? Yeah, she's, yes. she's very talented. Very yeah. fantastic, talented. Uh, but yeah, I want to talk about Mario and Rabbids. Yeah. Uh, I left out uh, for you personally. Eugene. Kingdom Battle. Yes, so um, I, I talked about this last night uh, and in the pre-show as well uh, that Mario and Rabbids uh, was announced today. Uh, Shigeru Miyamoto uh, came out on stage to talk about it, um, talking about how uh, he handed over the project over to Ubisoft and said, uh, give me a game. Uh, give me a Mario game that we've never seen before. And I, I think they definitely delivered. Uh, I was hoping for a more turn-based RPG, which we kind of got with a uh, kind of turn-based strategy game. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought the gameplay was uh, very interesting. It's definitely a new take on Mario, a new take on yeah. uh, Rabbids as well, the Rabbids universe. Yes. Um, yeah. But I, I thought it was very comical, um, the kind of little uh, trailer that they showed uh, with between the Rabbids and the Princess. Uh, you have the Princess Rabbit. Uh, and then we saw a little bit of uh, gameplay and a little bit of battle um, to where you use the map and the environment um, to kind of plan out how you're going to attack uh, the fiends 
and uh, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, it, was, it got very emotional too. You know, we talked about emotion uh, mm-hmm. last night, and you could really tell that uh, um, the guy, the the lead director, yes. you know, he wasn't even on stage. And I think I'd be in the same uh, kind of the same boat uh, as him. I don't think I could be able to handle it. You know, if I uh, brought out that game, if uh, Miyamoto came to me and said, "Give me something with my game. This is my game, but I want you to do something creative with it." Uh, you know, you could you could see him holding back tears a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, he's oh, yeah, he's he a little, getting a little bit of yeah. So, um, you know that re- that really caught my attention. You know, uh, like like you uh, mentioned yesterday, Tyler, about emotion. That mm-hmm. that's what that's what E three should be about. It's about uh, bringing something new to your fans and uh, uh, really gaining passion from developers and publishers uh, mm-hmm. with their games. And I, I think they delivered with this game. Are you guys excited for this at all, Ty- Tyler? I, I know you're super. Excited. Oh yeah, I actually am kind of leaning towards biggest... getting it. I'm not gonna lie. There you go. There so, you go. I, in fact, I said to Graham when we were watching the the thing, I, I was like, I'm actually glad this is on Switch. They need the titles because specifically, I, I need more reasons to keep it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is this looks like a good reason to keep it and you know go get this game. It, it looks fun. It, Sorry, it, Steven. Fun yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I. But yeah, go ahead, Mike. I don't have a ton to say on it because I well I don't have a switch right now. I'm still waiting mm-hmm. for, you know, m- m- many 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 more games to come out for it. But this is great. I mean, it's a little like I was telling you guys uh, offline before we started. It's a little XCOMy, and I like mm-hmm. the XCOM games a lot. Um, it looks like it's got a lot of good poten- a lot of potential. You know, mm-hmm. wouldn't be too hard to make new maps for it. You know, um, maybe just maybe they can expand it so you can have only you know custom maps and upload them and stuff like that in the future. Um, it looks, it's just, looks, it looks a little lighthearted, looks fun, looks Nintendo-y, and I think they did a really great job with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. My, All right, Mike, turn? what's your, <laughs> you, you already had your turn. It's Mike's turn. Yeah. 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 Right. I never what's talked about Marion Rabbit. No, I, I didn't Oh, you did. Oh, okay, Marion Rabbit. Right, okay. Fine. No, 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 go ahead, Graham. I'm sorry. No, no, that's cool. <laughs> no, uh, um, yeah, like I was going to say, it's amazing, great to see more third-party support for the Nintendo Switch. This is what Nintendo's been wanting for a long time, and it seems like we're getting it with Skyrim, with this with Mario game from Ubisoft. So it seems like everything is starting to go good for Nintendo, which is great to see, and this is a great Switch title. I mm-hmm. can't wait to pick this up, and like Mike's saying, like XCOM, like when I was watching too, I'm like, as soon as I saw like move the guy up close, and when he got close enough, they start shooting at the enemy, I'm like, oh, this is totally like XCOM. Except I hope they all don't die on me because that would suck. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's got like a lot of little like little like Mario quirks to it where they go and get on Mario's foot and he like kicks them over an obstacle so they can take out an enemy and like going through pipes and then mm-hmm. you see the little comedy where the rabbit character is dressed up as uh, Princess Peach and yeah. like just like looking down on her and it's like oh your dress sucks <laughs> or something like that right. So it's got this little like Mario quirky kind of stuff, but it looks like it's a great game. It's a different type of style of Mario that we're used to, which like we always want to try something a little different, right? And we still got the lovable yeah. characters, and you know, there's gonna be lots of like Mario nostalgia into it, and and rabbits. I don't know much about rabbits, but it, they look like really fun little characters. So it looks like a great mm-hmm. game, and Spin I'll off be picking this up on day one for sure. Okay, yeah. I never played those either, so. I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to it, and I will be picking this one up 100%. Okay. So now before you we move on, my... do, you, do you mind if I oh. do you mind if I touch up on something, uh, Mike? You said something about uh, map creation. So yes. they didn't touch up at all uh, multiplayer, did they? No, they did not. I think it, well, I think it'd be really interesting that maybe uh, maybe a multiplayer online aspect where you could like duke it out with somebody online. Uh-huh. Uh You know, I, I think that be might be something uh, that they could add. We could dream, but. Uh, I yeah. don't know. That would be cool. But, but yeah. I was going to say that when I was watching it, up on the left side of the screen, they actually had three scores for Mario and two other characters. So oh. it seems like other people can control those characters. Maybe some mm-hmm. co-op action. Yeah, yeah, that's what it seemed like. Because I don't understand why the other ones, their their like like points would come up for them if they were just uh, NPCs or whatever. So, huh. But yeah. I could be wrong. But it, mm-hmm. it looks like they opened up the door. And like I said, that would be a great game to play online like against other people as well. So it would mm-hmm. be interesting to see what route it goes when it comes out, which is uh, August 29th, which is not yep. too far away. So no. definitely going to be that. 
That's cool. very cool. That's going to be out so soon, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Mike, uh, rep, bring us home. Yeah, um, Roger, real quick, I'm, say, I'm really rooting for the Nintendo fans. I really want them to get the, you know, good support with this new uh, this Switch and stuff and stuff like that, because, you know, this uh, hopefully this, this has a better life than the Wii U. With that being said, guess which one I'm picking, Tyler? You already know this one. Uh, go for it. I know. Really? Is it Beyond? Far Cry 5. Oh, Far Cry 5, okay. Yeah, Far Cry 5 looks freaking amazing. Yeah, it does. I what? Uh, I played Far Cry 4 probably about halfway through. I was like, man, this looks like a hell of a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And you can have co-op because because they were showing that you know they said you know when the when the big rig came flying in you know yep. it, it's cast of characters they said your friend co-op whatever mm -hmm. it was you co-op it and you're basically fighting a cult and nobody likes a cult mm -hmm. and um, just the, the game the it just looks amazing and dogs funny you know you can throw you can throw you a mm -hmm. gun. Um, it, it just, it just really, really, really appeals to me. Yep. So I cannot wait for this. And I like the setting. It's in, it's in present day setting, or you know, as close to present mm -hmm. day as possible. Um, been to Montana. Looks a lot like that. Um, you know, <laughs> this is this is going to be one of those games that that I definitely play from front front to back until it's completed. Good. Yeah, I mean, I was happy with it too. I, I liked what we saw. The yeah. the battles look good. Um, you know, in terms of like the gunplay and all that stuff looks good. Mm -hmm. The uh, the setting looks great. Um, <laughs> the, the guy getting mowed over. <laughs> yeah, that was that was cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything about this game looks good, and I, I kind of want a game. I kind of want a Far Cry game that gets away from this whole like I need to go pick berries and do all yeah. this other stuff all the time. I'd rather have an experience more like what this seems to be. So. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Graham, what do you think? Yes, this game, like, I haven't played any of the Far Cry games. I don't know anything really about story, but what this trailer shame. looked really, yeah, I'm sorry. Who put on you? I can't be perfect. <laughs> you, are pretty, you are pretty perfect. So, yeah, no, but this this game looks really good. Uh, definitely wouldn't mind playing it. I'd with all the games coming out and stuff like that, I, will I get time to play this one? Oh, no, we're getting I, I don't know. But it'd be a speech. Well, <laughs> no, you're not say, getting speech. You're not getting they did speech. say, Grant, it's February 27th, I think, is the date for this. February 27th. See, yep. See, that's, a, that's not a bad time either for you me. So February. that could be a time where yep. I'd mm. be looking for it. So, yeah, no, this game looks great. And like I said, I haven't really played it and. So I don't know the story about the whole berry picking thing. That's definitely new to me. I like picking berries, though, so maybe that's a, a change that I don't you like. like picking, but anyways, you yeah, like the killing ga badgers. game looks... <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, yeah, definitely look forward to it. And I'll, I'll probably check it out and see what everyone's saying about it before I jump on board. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's what people wanted who really enjoy this series, so I'm glad that they're getting out what people want. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I got to say about it. All right. Eugene, your thoughts to close us out? Uh, I love Far Cry, and I'm excited for it. Uh, it, it, it seems more uh, in-depth than most Fallout, or Fallout, more, most Far Cries <laughs> that we've seen. Uh, yeah. But, man, th those graphics, those graphics are gorgeous, and then you got a lot of uh, Far Cry humor. Far Cry is full of humor. Uh, yeah. You know, you saw, uh, I can't remember his name, the guy that flies the plane. Uh, he's mm -hmm. usually the explosives guy, but you saw him uh, death from above, um, yeah. and I'm excited okay, to hear yeah. about the 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 go, the co-op play as well. But um, yeah, go, definitely go back and play the Far Cry uh, games uh, if you can. I, I would just go ahead and jump into Far Cry Four. Three uh, is fantastic. Uh, Primal I haven't even finished yet, um, but it, it it's also a great Far Cry game. It just doesn't stand out uh, like three and four do. But I'm totally mm -hmm. excited for it. Well, I just want to point yeah, like, out. Personally, I own Go Far ahead. Cry Primal, but I, okay. I just figured it was a totally different experience than the whole Far Cry series. I wouldn't start off with it. Yeah. Okay. So, I uh, just want to point out that Ubisoft had such a good card today that none of us brought up South Park. And yeah. None, yeah. Of us brought uh, up, none of us brought up Beyond Good and Evil 2, which is yeah. arguably the biggest surprise of, the, of E3 so far. It sounds to me like it's not completed and they want people to help them complete it. So it's what about but, the crew too? Oh yeah, well yeah, we also saw the crew too. We also saw DLC for Steep, a which is which is by the way, yeah. which is by the way, Olympic DLC and a South Park mobile game. 
So we saw it quite a bit today. And yeah. Beyond yeah, Good Evil 2 actually looks fun, by the way. And you know, I'm hoping that it doesn't come out till next it definitely doesn't come out till next year, but we or later. But if what we saw it looks good. And people were really excited for it. And this was a this was actually a strong Ubisoft conference compared to prior to previous years. Oh yeah. So it yes. good. Yes. So let's get into what grade we're gonna give it. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go. Um, I give it a very strong B, only because they had the balls to put just dance in there. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Eugene, what are you gonna give it? I will give it. It was an overall good conference. I'll give it a B minus. Uh, South Park, like you said, it, uh, I guess we're you know, so burn out on hearing news about it that we just wanted to come out. So, uh, yeah. you know, not, not too much to talk about. We've seen enough of it. We know what it's about. Uh, but it's all a B minus. Uh, the, the Just Dance thing always makes me cringe every year I see it. Uh, I think <laughs> I, I remember back in the day, uh, Usher. I don't know if you guys remember yes, Usher coming on stage. And, and the crowd was just like, what is going on right now? And it kind of got that same feel, like, what is going on right now with mm. these... Uh, this bubble, 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 uh, Japanese song and things like that. But, yeah. uh, good conference, good conference, uh, B minus. Okay. Graham. Um, I'll give it a B just because a lot of the stuff they show was like really short and nothing was really engaging you. Mm-hmm. And the whole Assassin's Creed thing, their approach to that, I think was completely wrong. Like I know that Microsoft showed off the bulk of it, but okay, Ubisoft, this is your title, so you need to take claim and own it and show the world that they want to get it no matter what system. But I think Microsoft took the full reins on that and kind of made it their game and stuff. Mm-hmm. So besides that, everything was pretty good. Like They had a lot of content, which I, d- I didn't expect that much. They actually had more the show than uh, Bethesda, mainly because mm-hmm. Bethesda showed stuff only for this year. But overall, it was pretty good. They had some big titles. They had some surprises, which didn't get leaked, which is nice. Though so far, there's been a, a lot of big surprises that haven't Perhaps. been leaked, surprisingly, Perhaps. which is, which is good. a very welcome change from uh, last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that would be a good mark. Um, and the, like I said, the steep with the expansion, it's good to see because I I don't know. Like they were saying that it got pretty good support. I don't really know about the numbers but this whole olympic winter olympics this might bring new life into that game so i think that was something that they had to do which is good on them that they did it so yeah that's that's my grade all right cool um for me i'm gonna go to b and i actually thought they had a pretty strong conference but i'm gonna give it i knock it down to a b for two reasons one um, when you're going to show Assassin's Creed gameplay of somebody playing it, don't do it on, like, making us look at somebody else's monitor, like, in a room that looks like it's outside under sunlight. Yeah. Like, yeah, and just, it was on a bad angle, too. Like, the screen was yeah, dark. It was dark. And this it just is supposed to be playing on, like, the, the Xbox One X, like, 4K system. <laughs> yeah. So, don't do that. And two, stop showing Just Dance in your conference. Like, there's, yeah. there's another three days of E3. You could easily just go on an IGN segment <laughs> and say, let's talk about Just Dance 2017. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's simple to do. That takes it out of your conference, and it, it's like bathroom break every time when Just Dance comes on. <laughs> so, it just is. And But I wish they would take that out. But otherwise, I think uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2, uh, fantastic surprise. Uh, The Far Cry 5 um, gameplay segment was fantastic. I thought, um, you know, the little bit we saw at South Park made me laugh a little bit. The South Park mobile game looks looks fun. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the pirate game looks amazing. So Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. And, uh, you know, I think Ubisoft had a good show, but I'll give them a B overall. All right. All right. Let's... uh, Let's go to fan questions, and we got a couple. So the first one is, uh, actually, do we think anybody's going to buy Sea of Thieves anymore after we saw uh, Skull and Bones? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Well, yes, there's because... The time, there's the time difference between the two mm-hmm. releases, and they're for two different audiences. Mm-hmm. You know? So everybody's waiting for a fire game, still going to buy Sea of Thieves no matter what, because mm-hmm. there's no way that Skull and Bones is going to be done near when Sea of Thieves comes out. So, yeah, I think that uh, people will. 
Uh, here's an interesting question, and this doesn't necessarily apply just to uh, this conference, but overall. Does anyone wish that the conference is available to view in VR for people that already have the headsets? Huh. Um, uh, really what do you mean, like it. the games they show you can see in so, VR? So you know how every VR headset has like theater mode, and then let's say once, once they start showing VR footage, it triggers it, and you go into VR. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah that's a good possibility. But then, like, but what perspective is it going to be in? Like, I'm sitting down, so it's going to be like I'm sitting at the conference, and I could turn and see somebody to my right, and turn and see somebody to my left, even though I looked the wrong way as the name I just said. I think it's no. more for the gameplay, uh, Graham. But, I think it's more for the gameplay. Like when they actually do VR gameplay, so you can actually experience what it's. So going then, to like. so then, baby, they, they take control of the protagonist, and like they control like you wouldn't moving control around anything. the world. And as you wouldn't you control, turn. you wouldn't control anything. You would just view it through the VR yeah. headset as you would see it when you play. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, I can... like I feel like you would have the control of it because it's basically mm -hmm. about turning, and when you turn, the screen reacts to yeah. you turning. Yeah, I mean, so I basically, see that. this is like. They could pretty much just take a camera and do like a fly view through it and say, okay, this is VR, but I, I don't know yeah. how they could do the experience. Yeah. I could totally see it. Uh, I don't think that they could input it into the conference, but I could totally see the idea of like, hey, let's make a special VR trailer that if you have a VR uh, yeah. headset that you can, uh, you can actually see this trailer. And, you know, they have like, you know, on Facebook um, where you can, uh, you know, you have the 360 view, right? Mm -hmm. where you can control it with your phone. I'm sure they could do the exact yeah. same thing uh, with a trailer to where the trailer plays, and then while you're within the trailer, you can do the looking around, and you can view different mm -hmm. aim angles and things like that. So it's definitely possible. I just don't think that'll be part of the core conference, um, mm -hmm. that they'll uh, maybe once, if VR does launch and get big, we are still at the, you know, I, I still feel like uh, we haven't seen that one game uh, that makes a VR a must-buy yet. Um, but I, I think it's a possibility in the future if VR does launch that we'll get special trailers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Speaking of reviewing a conference, I was trying to find somewhere where I could rewatch the Microsoft one in native 4K like we streamed it on... Uh, I couldn't Mixer. find it. I tried you, to uh, last night. I couldn't you, find it. Not even off the yeah. homepage? Not even off the, the dashboard on Xbox One? No, I tried it I on the up. dashboard under Mixer. Yeah, couldn't find um, it. Don't so. don't go into Mixer. Like literally, there's an E3 page on the front on the front page. Huh. Um, okay. on the home I'll have to check it out say, because yeah. I really want to look at those games again mm -hmm. in oh, native yeah. 4K because those games looked amazing. I pretty much wanted to buy mm -hmm. every one of them. It's a good thing they're not there <clears> wasn't a salesman next to me with the game because I would have just gave them all my money. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'll go live on so. the street. <laughs> so, so yeah. let, let's, uh, one, one more thing I want to touch on. Eugene actually posted this on our Facebook group today. So, uh, you know, a good reason fanboyism should not exist. So remember this as we go into Sony tonight, everybody. Um, PlayStation tweeted <laughs> out. Oh, yeah. PlayStation tweeted out, set your alarm, stock up on midnight snacks, and tune in from 1 a.m. Uh, BST in England for the PlayStation conference. Xbox UK replies, have a great show, guys, with the with little green heart. Very special. I had a blue heart. And then PlayStation responds, thanks, babe, XOX. If they can get along, we all can, too. Aww. It was very special and heartwarming. Aww. Yeah, PlayStation but, UK and Xbox UK, by the way. Yep. Yeah. So if you yeah. want, uh, and, and if that's too much for you, just go turn on IGN and look at the comments. Yeah. <laughs> on Twitch. <laughs> you'll, you'll feel better oh, right away. Come on. No, I, I do. No, I spent part of the day watching it, and yeah. it's just bashing back and forth. No, it's, so uh, I don't want to go over there right now, but <laughs> so. I, it's really good to see. I, I really like like after the conference, like whenever uh, we always see it with like Shuhei Yoshida and Phil Spencer, like mm -hmm. just going on Twitter and just saying, "Hey, congratulations! Fantastic conference! Uh, yep. uh, definitely a lot, a lot of excitement." So it's good to see that you know with all the fanboy hate and with all the fighting and arguing and this is who won this is who did this that you know the yeah. the leaders the actual publishers and uh developers can actually just say hey good job guys we're all gamers and uh, this is what it's about so mm -hmm. oh, i agree 100 percent. so all right uh let's get into our giveaway and we did select uh -huh. a winner before the show so we have mr ryan schneider 
is Ryan winner, Schneider. Ryan Schneider is the winner of a twenty-five dollar Xbox gift card. So congratulations, sir, for nice. winning the Ubisoft and Bethesda giveaway. So nice. I want to tell you we're gonna have two yeah, giveaways, Ryan. two giveaways tonight on these uh, on the Sony podcast after the Sony press conference, and they are gonna be pretty cool. I'll tell you guys what they are up front. It's gonna be one is a fifty dollar Sony card. And the other is a copy of The Surge for PlayStation 4. Good guy. So, yeah, that's uh, some good stuff. So we're going to have two giveaways tonight. Uh, and those that will be uh, the two that we give away. So let's talk about Sony for a second. What are we looking forward to seeing? Just real quick before we get out of here. That's one thing each. Cool. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go first while you guys are thinking. Release dates. Give them to me. Give them to me or don't, yeah. or don't give them to me or don't you dare say you won. But do you want release dates two years down the road and three years down the no, road, they won't or give do those. you want them just they won't to give show those. show things that it's coming out recent? They're, they're only giving a release date if it's coming out. I don't want Windows. I don't. Let me clarify. I don't want release Windows. I don't want Fall 2018. I want to see September whatever 2017. I want to see February whatever 2018. I don't. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to okay. see. So give me. You think we'll get at least six, six solid release dates from PlayStation? I'd be happy if we got more than three, and by for exclusives. Three, eh? For exclusives. I think I think we'll get at least six. I don't. They did last year. I'd be really surprised. Yeah, we hardly got anything last year. I remember because taking notes why this is going on, and I don't remember putting out any years hardly for any of the PlayStation games. We got a Last Guardian date last year, and that got pushed. Again, what else did we get? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I'd have to go, I'd have to go Final back over my notes. 15? They didn't. They didn't. Uh, didn't think it was Final Fantasy Real Estate, but that's that was a multi-platform. It's not an exclusive yeah. title. Did we get a Horizon Zero Dawn release date last year? I don't think so. I think that came later. Yeah. Uh, no, so, I think we did. I, I think it said Feb- they said February. I, I think you might be right. It, it, we might have gotten that too. But I'm talking exclusives. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually what well, I'm interested we'll see. in seeing real yeah. quick. Is I, I'm interested in, see, in, interested in seeing what exclusives they have coming up. Yep. Give me a reason to buy a PlayStation Four. Yep. That's pretty much short and simple for um, me. Um. Yeah. What would you say, Eugene? What are you looking forward to? I was thinking. So there, I, I want to touch up on the release date thing. I, I really think that the major titles that they talked about last year, uh, we we better see some release dates on each of those. So Spider Man. Uh, I can't even think right now. God of War. God of War for I think, I think God of War. For God of War. Sure. Uh, Zombie uh, One. Last of Us Two. Yeah. Uh, Days Gone. Yeah. yeah. So we we need to see release dates on that, and then uh, we need to see windows for new triple A's. Uh, don't bring Death Stranding, which we already know. Uh, but I was thinking earlier when uh, uh, in, uh, when I was rewatching Bethesda, uh, I was thinking about uh, Doom VR, and I was thinking about Fallout VR. So I was thinking maybe. Possibly PSVR. It could be on PSVR, and I know they they didn't show Ooh. anything about it. That they showed the vibe, but what if Doom VR and Fallout 4 VR come out for PSVR? That would be would that be a game maybe maker? Doom? Yeah, but Fallout. Yeah, I don't know. That would be impressive. Yeah, so I that might be one of those uh, off the wall predictions. Yeah, that is, yeah, it's not a prediction really, but you know, it just kind of got me thinking. Like, uh, you know, they they touched up on it. But they didn't really say, like, uh, you can only play this on the Vive. They didn't say that specifically. Or they didn't, you know, because they showed the Vive, but they didn't, <clears throat> did they say anything about it? Did you guys mm. hear them say anything no. about, like, no, what no. you can play it on? No. So no. that's what got no. me thinking about it, is because they didn't mention it, yeah. uh, you know, is there a possibility, which I think that would be huge for, uh, not only for PlayStation, but for VR in general. And that could mm-hmm. sell some VRs and bring some life to it, for sure. It could, yeah. Okay, sp- Speaking of VR, um, Ubisoft showed uh, Transference, which was a yes. VR title. Now, did that say that was PSVR or didn't say on anything. Steam? Like, didn't say anything. It didn't say anything, right? No. Nope. So, basically, we have no idea about that one as well. Right. Um, and I don't know why, if it's VR, why you wouldn't say what it's for, but I right. guess that's just something they chose. But yeah, if I, I had to what, choose... What's the what, other one? Uh, Oculus Rift. Yeah, Oculus. You know, they aren't, aren't there specific titles for Vive and for Oculus? Like they're two different kind of systems, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't say anything. Like you can only play this on Vive. You can only play this on Oculus. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, or PSVR. I was saying it was PSVR, but so, but I don't know about that. But as far as what I'm looking for to Sony, uh, the main thing is I want to see what they got up their sleeve to go up against Microsoft, because I don't think they're just gonna like just accept it and not do any kind of like damage control or try to say hold off. We got a better system coming. I feel like they have to. And I really hope they're not just going to make stupid jabs at Microsoft saying, oh, we, we, we thought about doing this, but our fans don't want this. Or just no, do I don't little think they can. I don't think they can. So, like, this is their chance to, I don't know if they'll shine, but they need to, they need to have something. So I'm just looking forward to see what Sony is going to bring. If not, then Microsoft is going to be 100% the winner. So I don't know. They, okay. they got to bring it, so I want to see what they're going to bring. All right. Well, we're going to find out soon, and we're going to be yeah. back to talk about getting you into the Sony conference, uh, leading you into it uh, starting at 7.40 Central Time, 8.40 Eastern, and 5.40 Pacific, leading into the Sony show, which starts at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and 8 p.m. Central. But until then, everybody, that's going to do write it for episode times. number. Yep, yeah, write them down. That's going to do it for episode number 55 of Gaming Culture Radio. Please head over to our Facebook page, the Gaming Culture Radio Forums. Join there, ask questions to have a chance to win those two awesome giveaways for Sony and uh, win our giveaway for Nintendo tomorrow and our big giveaway at the end of E3 week. And uh, while you're there, head on over to xboxculture.net, playstationculture.net for all the latest in E3 news and just stay there to keep up with everything this week that's going on at E3. So for Mike, Graham, and, and Eugene, I'm Tyler saying thanks so much for joining us for episode number 55. We'll be back in... As soon as Sony's done for episode number 56. Until then, stay safe, everybody. Enjoy the Sony conference. Have fun, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, everyone.